thanks for joining. And, uh, and I just want to give you, uh, I, especially for those who weren't here last time, uh, but I want to, I want to just give you just a really brief, what is it? What is kingdom business network about? And I, I thought of another way of kind of approaching this. I, each time I'm going to give you a little bit more in terms of where I want to go. Honestly, I would love to see, 100,000 Christians in the workplace so activated, so seeing the power of God flow through their lives that, that, that those Christians, when they, when they come to the door of their, of their workplace, they're not just leaving Jesus at the door and walking in, but they are uh, literally um, uh, on the lookout uh, for, for what Jesus wants to do through them that day. Not in, a, not in an obnoxious way, but just the most sensitive and loving and yet uh, um, amazing way that they bring the power of God, the word of God, the presence of God into that workplace with them. And they believe really they're actually bringing, they're like the tabernacle uh, in the Old Testament only, but we, the New Testament says, how much more do we have in this new covenant than the, it had in the old covenant? Well, the old covenant had that tabernacle with the presence of God on it. We carry the very presence of God into our workplace and and there should be actually a difference. Everywhere that tabernacle went in the Old Testament, uh, there was incredible impact from that tabernacle. Well, that's what should be happening through our lives today. And, uh, and so I'm just glad, uh, I'm glad we have uh, Todd Gant here. He has been doing this and living this out. And so uh, Todd, thanks so much for joining us uh, sure. today. I'm, we're gonna get right over you because we wanna give you, I wanna give you as much time as possible. Um, now, in terms of in terms of Todd's background, I mean, he he's really seen seen so much. Uh, your, your own son, and actually, I would love for you to take a couple minutes, Todd, and maybe just share about your son being healed of autism. I actually forgot about that. I I've known Todd for probably I don't know at least seven eight years something like that, and uh, got to know him. I actually would refer people over to him to to pray for folks that would email us email us after uh, power and love and I just wouldn't have chance to, to follow up on these. And so I would, I would kind of forward the emails over to Todd and he would follow up on them and pray for people and they'd see pe people being healed over the phone. Uh, incredible things. But anyway, but Todd has, Todd Gant has his uh, feet really in both worlds. Cause he's, he's a minister, you're a minister, Todd. And, uh, and you preach and you teach and you minister in jails and, uh, prisons and and as well as churches, uh, I, I I love it. You you and yet you you have this job. I know you were just on a call. <laughs> I just got you. I just said you, your call was running a little bit late though. So you just got off that call, and you work for a biomed, and that makes uh, medical devices the world's smallest heart pump. That would right. be interesting. But anyway, um, I'm just going to let you share the Todd. I'll let you take the stage. And, and, and just because I know you have had experience in your work, in your work world of bringing the power of God, the presence of God, just the very thing I was just talking about. So I think, you know, I, I just am very curious, share with us uh, and, and give it, give us some, give us some insights. I think we want to, we really can learn from you today. Okay. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here, Tom, as always. And, and, uh, and as you said, we've had a relationship now for almost 10 years um, that I feel like the Lord just, the Lord established the relationship. We weren't trying to establish a relationship, but that's what the right. Lord did in our lives. You know, he's, he's at work even when you can't see it. And you have to just trust that he's at work in your life, even in, in times when you feel like he's not. I mean, you know, when King David was throwing rocks at, at, against trees in the middle of nowhere, he had no idea what was about to happen to him. Uh, later, but the skill that he developed by himself in the middle of nowhere is is what was on center stage soon after that. So, don't be ashamed or don't be be frustrated by the times when you feel like you're just doing nothing for God because it may be a prep season for something that's coming. But to give you the quick abridged version with my son, my son, I have twins. They're 20 years old, almost 21, and uh, one of them was born uh, with with a version of autism and if you guys know what that is it's a variety of different things but one of them is medical challenges social challenges physical challenges etc and i was i was working for a medical device company at that time as i am now um i would have called myself a fallen away christian at that point this was in 2005 
And to go quickly through the story, this could take an hour, but I'll try to try to abridge it as much as I can. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you off of that. I just remember that. I thought that'd be so interesting. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the quick, the quick version. So I was driving through my neighborhood and I was in a really dark place as, as a man. Um, you know, I was, honestly, I was contemplating trying to find a way to check out of my life and, and just disappear and go somewhere else. And uh, it's because he, his condition wasn't improving and I was spending every dollar I had and dollars I didn't have to try to heal him with medical terms and, and nothing was changing. And, God audibly spoke out loud to me in my car. So God does that uh, on occasion. I don't know why he did it to me that day, but he just said two words, turn here. And I was in front of a church. So I did. I listened to God. So when God talks to you in your car and shakes your car, you should probably listen, right? It's like a good idea, right? So, so that's what I did. And I, I, I went in and met with this pastor I'd never met before. And I told him what just happened. And, and he, he gave me good advice. He said, look, you're trying to heal your son, um, but it's not working. Why don't you give God a chance? And I said, that's really good advice. I don't know how to do that. And, and he said, well, let's just pray. So I prayed over my son in that moment. I call it the world's most pathetic prayer because I had no idea how to pray at that point. Um, and I asked the pastor, what should I do now? And he said, well, just go home. So I went home that day. And, and a long story short, the next day, my son came down the stairs. He was at that point, he was four years old. And something had miraculously changed in him overnight. He was able to do things that he could not do before. He had never spoken a word before. And he said, good morning that morning. And it was, I mean, I get tears when I talk about it now. And I've told this story wow. a thousand times. And so from that date for the next 30 days, every medical condition he had resolved. Every single medical condition he had completely resolved. Wow. And no one understood why the physicians were like, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Right. Just keep And we're like, we're not doing anything. It's just God. And, and so he was, he was four and a half years old at that point. He's 20. Now he's a straight A student in college and a sophomore. Um, he's, he is on fire for the Lord. He is preaching the gospel to every person he can even find. You know, I always say that when, when, when God answers a prayer, it's like a pendulum, right? If you're over here and you're praying, that pendulum starts to swing when it swings, it swings past the target and it goes way over here on the other side. And what you're asking for, he does it beyond what you can think or even imagine. And that's what's happened with my son. I mean, he is a evangelist squared. I mean, I can't even tell you how, how awesome it is. And I was praying for that, but not with the tenacity that has happened to him in his life. So um, very long story short, that, that put me on a path to then try to understand what just happened to my son. And it led me down this other path that, you know, for a period of time, I studied the Bible, started understanding what healing looked like in the Bible, completely surrendered myself to the Lord. And eventually, you know, met Tom and met other pastors, started teaching in churches, but still, you know, and I'll try to segue into this conversation because this is more of a business conversation. All during that time, I kept saying, asking the Lord, Lord, did you want me to go into full-time ministry? And not one time did he ever say yes to that. And at times I was trying to make it up, right? I thought maybe he said that to me today, right? But he, he, ne he never told me to go into full-time ministry. He always said, no, I want you in both because, and I will equip you and give you the power you need and the energy you need and the tenacity you need to do both. So don't evaluate yourself based on someone else you see. I, I need to be like Tom or I need to be like, you know, some pastor out here, there, and don't evaluate your life based on that because what the Lord may have for you, he may have you in a business setting for the rest of your life to bring salt and to bring light into that setting. And, and don't, don't discount that. Don't compare yourself with what you think you should do. Just surrender your will when it comes to your life and let the Lord do what he wants to do because that pathway, although it may not look like anybody else's pathway, that is your pathway. And I mean, I've, I've had to preach to myself this topic for years because at times I would see Tom and I would be like, I think I'm supposed to be doing what Tom's doing or Bill Johnson, you know, or other, other pastors that are, that are more national level pastors. And the Lord would always shut that down. He would never let that continue. And I had to come to grips with the fact that for this season today, you know, on October 8th, I'm supposed to do both. I'm supposed to be in ministry as you are on this, you know, if you're a Christian, you're a minister. And if you're a minister, 
you can share the gospel. You may not have total and complete belief in that, but Jesus has belief in you because you can do that. And, and he wants you to do it wherever you're planted, whatever that might be, whatever business you're working in, whatever darkness is there, he wants you to step into that environment. And I wanna take the pressure off of you today because I think that's the most important part of this call is to realize that it, it's not a situation where the Lord is expecting you to walk into your business tomorrow and, and essentially just tell everyone to stop what they're doing because I need to preach the gospel now for the next hour and a half, right? That, that, that feels intimidating to, to most of us, right? But that is not what the Lord is asking you to do. You're supposed to be salt and light and, and look at salt. What does salt do? Salt is not the food. Salt enhances the food, right? It brings out the flavor in the food. It changes the dynamic of the food. And it's even a little bit of it will change the complexion of that meal completely. So yeah. don't put pressure on yourself as a minister of the gospel in the workplace to try to go in and evangelize with all this material. It's one conversation at a time, showing love and grace to people. And, and then- I think, then I think- Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think, I think that that uh, I know as we were talking, you shared about some of those. Uh, uh, I, I think this is awesome what you're sharing, but I, I also think that um, maybe given some examples, because I know that you've lived this out this way and, yep. and some examples of what's happened, it would be awesome. So I, I'll, give you, I'll give you two examples that happened uh, just this week. And so, I mean, there's, you know, if I always, I always tell people when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm in a minister role that, you know, if, if you're walking out the Christian life, you should have examples on a weekly basis of things that are happening in your life that you see God working in. If, if you don't see those things in your life, then you're being too conservative. You need to be willing to step into a place where Jesus needs to help you in a conversation, uh, when it comes to, your, to, to other things in your life. And we don't have time to go into that. But just this week, I'll, I'll give you an example. Tom and I were talking about it yesterday. A man that, that I report to within the company who has a lot more status from a business standpoint than I do. He's, he's much further up in the organization than I am. And you know, for those of you guys that, have, that work in the corporate world, you understand there's, there's kind of a hierarchy when it comes to the corporate world that at times you don't, you don't really want to step across that, right? It's, there's there's an, some assumptions around how you interact with people. But he came to me and was talking about a friend of his whose son is 21 years old and has died from COVID um, complications, 21 year old young man. And he said to me, cause he, he knows that you know, I, I talk about Jesus in the workplace. He was like, I'm, you know, have you ever been mad at God? Was his question. And, and I said, no, not really. I haven't been mad at God. I said, but he goes, well, I'm mad at God right now. I mean, I'm mad that God would, would take this young man from, from my friend's life, you know, from, from him, it, it was his friend's son. And, and I said, listen, you know, God is good. He, he's not, he didn't do this to this young boy. I mean, and, and I don't have time, if, you know, we don't have time to go through kind of a discussion around how good God is and why he doesn't do these things, but let's just pray about it real quick. And he was like, right now? And I'm like, yeah, let's just pray. Can I pray? Are you okay if I just pray real quick? And he was like, yeah, sure. So I just prayed over him and I, I just, and it was a quick prayer, right? If you're praying in the, in the marketplace, it's not going to be a five minute prayer. It's going to be something along the lines of, and I would, I would encourage you guys to rehearse this, right? So that you're ready to go on a, on a second's notice. Cause I said, Hey, do you want to pray? He was like, yeah. I said, well, let me just pray real quick. You right now. I go, yeah, like right now. And, and so I just said, father, God, just, I just speak life and health and peace over my friend. Father, I just ask that you open his eyes and his heart to who you are. In the name of Jesus, amen. That was it. It was just a quick prayer, full of grace and full of love. I didn't get into a long, you know, 18-point sermon on why God is good. I, there wasn't time for that. It wasn't the right setting. Love it. But I just shared a little bit with him. But now the Holy Spirit's working on him, right? He's going home. He's like, wow, that was interesting. I wonder if I should open my Bible. He's going to open his Bible. And guess what? The Holy Spirit's going to him into a scripture that's going to talk about love and God's peace. And he's going to read that and go, I, I never saw that before. And he's going to probably come back to me and go, you know what? I opened my Bible last night and I read the scripture and I never heard it that way before. I'm like, yeah, that was that prayer we prayed. The Holy Spirit opened your eyes to that. So let's talk some more now and I'll sprinkle a little more salt on, on his life. And so 
that's just an example. You know, it's, it's just an example of, of being in the moment and being willing to share your faith. The other example that I highlighted with Tom was there was a, a woman that works for my company. My company's based in Boston. And, and uh, I, I call in, I've, I've met this woman. She's been a long-term employee. Um, she's, she's a very humble woman. You can tell she's a Christian woman, just the way she carries herself in conversations. And I've befriended her when I've been in Boston, the, the four or five times I've been at the home office. And, and I happened to call in and talk to her. And she said, we had a quick conversation. I said, Hey, do you remember who I am? She's like, yeah, I do. And, and, and I, she said, well, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be off next week and someone else will answer the phone. And I'm like, well, what, what are you going to do fun? She goes, well, I'm actually on furlough uh, because of COVID with the company. And so um, I said, oh, okay, well, are you okay with that? And she goes, not really. You know, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to lose my job. And I said, well, well, why don't we pray about that? And she was like, like right now? And I go, yeah, let's pray right now. So I just prayed over her, the same kind of thing. God, give her grace for this next week. Let her relax with you. I, you know, I feel like this is a week for her to spend a week with you and not have to be at work. And she starts crying on the phone, you know, and, and it wasn't a video call, it was an audio call. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, people are going to walk in. They think I called and made her cry now and I'm going to get in trouble. And, you know, I'm <laughs> joking, but, you know, but I mean, I felt like I felt emotional about it. And I just said, look, just go have a great week next week. And, and remember that God, God's got this for you. So, and then we got off the call and that was it. It wasn't, it wasn't this much bigger thing. And I, I highlight those two examples just because I, I want you to know that the, the power of the words in love and grace coming out of your mouth in those circumstances, you have no idea how powerful they are to people. Now I'll, I'll highlight, if I have time, Tom, I'll highlight one other quick example. I, I was in an airport, um, I was in an airport recently and, and, it was late at night. I was I had to I had to go from one one airport to the next to get home, and it was around nine o'clock. And I was about to have dinner uh, in the airport, and and I was just sitting there, you know, working kind of on my phone. And and this waitress comes up, and it was a it was like a salad kind of place. And so what I what I try to do is I try to open the conversation with people, right? So because when when you when you say to someone, "How's your day going?" or just smile at someone, they take it in a way you don't understand. The Holy Spirit is in the middle of that smile. He's in the middle of that gesture of love. He's in the middle of that. It's not a Christian, you know, I'm not giving her a verse, right? I'm just being kind, right. of, but I'm extending out. And what it does is it opens the door for another part of the conversation. So when she walked up and said, what do you want? I said, well, look, I've never been here before. What do you recommend? You, you obviously know. And she goes, well, I, I, I think you should have this salad. And I said, well, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. And I was just kind of joking around with it, right? And she laughed. And so she walks off and she places the order. Well, when she walked off, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And you guys know what that feels like, right? You just know that you know that there's something you're supposed to do next. And so when she walked off, the Holy Spirit, in my, in my heart, in my mind, he said, tell her she's doing a good job. And that was it. Don't quote a scripture to her. Don't, don't do anything more than that. Just tell her she's doing a good job. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So you have to be willing, right? The Holy Spirit needs you to open your mouth. He's not standing there. Yeah. You have to open your mouth and, and, and express what he gives to you. And you have to trust. And I know Tom talks about the prophetic word often, but if you feel like you're hearing something, you have got to have the, the, the security to say it, even if it's not right. Because if you say it in love, it's coming from the Holy Spirit. Even if you're wrong, you're still given grace to try to hone that, that voice that comes from you, right? So I knew right. the Holy Spirit told me to do that. And so when she came back, she, she came back with the food and I said, hey, you know, um, don't take this the wrong way, but I, I just, I feel like, I just wanted to tell you, I think you're doing a good job. The second I said that to her, she starts bawling uncontrollably. Like, again, like I'm going to be in trouble, right? There are people, like I just made this <laughs> cry, right? Like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen, right? <laughs> And I look, I go, I go, I go, honey, what's wrong? I'm sorry. And she goes, no, 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 you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. I, I was in a fight with my boyfriend this morning and, and my boyfriend said that, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm too nice to the people that I serve. And so when I was driving to work today, I, she goes, I was talking to God and I said, God, listen, if I'm, if I'm acting okay, please have someone tell me that I'm doing a good job today. Oh my goodness. That was from God, right? So she heard that from me and she goes, this is confirmation that I'm okay, that I'm at peace. And I, I started crying. We're both crying in the middle of the restaurant. I just said, 
we're okay. Just keep doing what you're doing and, and you're doing a great job. And she walked off and that was it. I paid the bill and you know, I laughed. So my point in the conversation with you guys is it, it's those small things, right? It's not these big giant preaching moments, which you may have and, and God bless you if you have those, but don't put pressure on yourself around that in the business world. Just bring that gentle, soft conversation into the moment and sprinkle it with a little bit of a little Jesus on top of it. And then let, let the Holy spirit do what he wants to do in that moment. That's, that's, yeah, my- I, you know, I just, I, I, that's why I think it's so interesting that when you're, when you're believing the Lord that he's going to work and you, again, you just open your mouth um, and, and, and move into it, then the Lord will open the door. And, and then you'll know even about taking the next step, as long as you're, as long as you're um, open to say, okay, hey, hey, maybe this might be the time. This might be the time to lead this person to the Lord. Um, that as long as you're open to that, and you're, and you're, what the question I love to ask, and again, I don't want to take up your time, but but you just, it just remind me so strongly. The question I love to ask is, hey, I believe Jesus is after you right now. I believe Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Do you know how to have a relationship with Him? Do you know how to to connect with that? And then, and then, you know, they may be yes or no or whatever. And then, and then, but it gives you an opportunity to open the door and to share with them. Um, so anyway, that it's just, but I just love it. It's, but how sensitive you were, you, you're, it, it's that openness and willing to move and saying, Lord, what are you doing in this person's life? Yeah, Tom, I, I completely agree with you. And, and there's plenty of settings where, where you allow that conversation to continue. But most of my settings, I don't have that opportunity because it's a very right. short data point, like literally 30 seconds, and then we're going separate directions because of the business requirement. But the, the thing right. that, gives me, um, that gives me confidence, and I should get everyone confidence here, is, is there's a place in Isaiah where it talks about you know, some water and some grow, but the Lord continues that, right? And so just understand right. that your job may be, like, like with that young woman that was the waitress, my job in, in the equation of her Christian walk, it may be to break up a little bit of hard ground and confirm that the Lord is listening to her, right? Then tomorrow, yeah. he's going to send Tom across her path at the restaurant. He's going to sit down. The Lord's going to speak to her, his heart or any of you on the phone. And then the next step is going to happen with her. And then the next step is going to happen with her. And then suddenly right. we get to a place where, She's going to be sitting on a plane next to some radical evangelist who's got her trapped for five hours on a plane. And then the gospel is just going to get poured into her for five hours and right. everything is going to change. I don't know, but I trust. What I, what I love about what you're sharing is that, that it's really, it, there's a heart trust in the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, we do our job, but we're co-laborers and we're trusting in the Holy Spirit to do his job and to continue to take those seeds that we're, we're sowing and, and yet to be aware, hey, this could be the first time and you may need to say to somebody, hey, can we meet for lunch to can follow up on this? I feel like, Lord, you know, when, when, when it kind of when, when it's ripe, when it's ready to be picked there, maybe just take another um, couple minutes here and maybe just share another fun story or, or two of, of, uh, of what's going on at work. Because I think that we learned so much uh, from, from these stories and these testimonies of what the Lord's done. Yeah, I'll, there's, there's one that's happened. These are all within the last couple of weeks. And, and so, you know, I, I work for a company. There, there's 26 people that do my job within the company. And our company has got, you know, 15,000 people within the company. I'm, I'm, in a level, I'm in a role of leadership where I have, I, my team is about 50 people. So I, I have to hire people and I have to terminate people. And so um, that's never easy. And it, it's always very challenging for me to, to do that, but I have to stay focused on the fact that some people are just not in the right position and there's a better position for them. But I, ha- I had to go through a conversation with someone uh, yesterday that took them from a position to a lower position. And on that call, um, I mean, that's a very uncomfortable phone call for me, right? I mean, it's for every oh, yeah. comfortable phone call to have to do that. Um, but I always look at it that, you know, it's not my money that I'm spending here. It's, it's someone else's money. This company doesn't belong to me. And I have to be a good steward of my role and my responsibility. And I have to work as if I'm working unto the Lord, right? So the ability to translate that into a conversation full of grace, where you're taking someone from one position to another, where their income is going to be substantially changed. 
um, I had that conversation just, just this week and I had other people on the call with me. I had an HR person on the call with me because that's just our protocol. And so after I got through with that call, um, the HR person called me back and said, I, I've been on a lot of those calls and I don't understand how you just did that, right? You had a conversation demoting someone and at the end of the call, they were like, thank you so much. I, I look forward to continuing to, to be able to add to this organization. And, and this, this person said, I, how did you do that? Like, and I said, look, in that moment, you cannot take credit for yourself, right? It's not coming from me. Right. The, the grace to have that conversation, which looks like an impossible situation, right? The grace in the middle of that comes from the Lord. And it, it is not something that I'm, I can't consciously do that. It's not coming from Todd. It's grace because I've, I've allowed myself and, and you guys are in the same place. You can be used for whatever it is you choose to do. You just have to surrender your will in that moment and let the Lord speak through you. And I told her that I said, listen, it's not me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not some special manager here. I'm just trusting the Lord that he's going to give me the right words with the right level of volume with the right level of grace at the, in the right timing in order to deliver that message so that they still feel valued as a person because they're, whatever job they have is irrelevant in the kingdom. The Jesus doesn't care if you're the president of the United States or you're, or you're not. He doesn't care. He, he just wants you to be a, a, a vehicle to be used by him in whatever setting you're in. And I, I had the opportunity to minister to this, this woman who is not a believer. She's, she's, she's a profoundly vocal atheist. I mean, a loud atheist. So the Lord is working on her on that call through how I spoke to this man. I wasn't even talking to her, but when she came right. on, she goes, I don't understand. Like you had, you had a lot of patience for this young man, but normally people in your position, you just cut the tie. This isn't going to work. You're fired. See you later. That, that's the normal conversation that happens. And that's not what happened on our yeah. call. And so I, didn't take, I gave Jesus credit for it. And I opened the door, you know, she, she didn't suddenly become a believer yesterday, but, but the Lord's using that conversation now. So that, that's just another example that all those have happened in the last two weeks. And so um, yeah. I try to as, as, as close to today as possible. So you understand that it's just, it's yeah. just natural progression. So. Um, that, that's great. We probably have time for one more uh, quick story. Uh, what, what's your favorite one? Like, as you look back, what is the one that you look back and you think, or one of your favorites that you look back and think, man, that was, that was just fun. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, th this one's more of a ministry one, but this, this one's, this one's awesome. So you guys have to hear this. One. So, um, well, I have, I have a lot, I don't have enough time to tell you a longer one, but the longer one is my favorite. This is my second favorite. So I was sitting, okay. at, um, I was sitting at a table, um, and I had two, two other folks in front of me and we were in a prayer meeting. Um, and uh, at the time I was getting phone calls from Tom and some, a couple other ministries to manage prayer requests for them. So Tom would text me or call me and say, Hey, I have someone I want you to call. Here's the situation. Yeah, can you call him? I'm like, yep, I'll call him. So then I would just literally, I'd, I'd look at his text. I'd hit the number phone number and I would call him. I don't know anything about the person, but I would bring the power of God into that conversation. And I've seen so many people healed of physical stuff, deliverance. I mean, just you name it. I've seen it happen in those settings. Well, so this setting, uh, it, it was not someone from Tom. It wasn't coming from Tom, but I called and it was an 80 year old man and his wife and he had throat cancer and he had been discharged to go home essentially to die that night. Um, he had been discharged from, from the hospital and he had throat cancer on the outside. So it was described for me. I never saw him, but it was like a Uh oh, we're losing your little Todd. Unless it's just me. Shake your head if you if you can't hear Todd anymore. Go like that. Okay, oh. Todd, we just lost you. Come back, In Jesus name. Uh oh. He will be healed. Well, by you know what. Oh, okay, Todd, you're going to have to back up about 30 seconds. We just lost you for about 30 seconds. We're losing the internet a little bit. Oh, he's totally gone now. All right, well, <laughs> we you are going to have to, uh, oh, oh, yes, I, I can hear you. Just, yes. just, 
I, I'm back, so I don't know if I'm on video or not, but it clicked off and clicked on. Okay. So, um, okay. All right. So you're going to have to, you're saying you, 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 we, we lost you at the point you're saying he had throat cancer and he was going home to die that night. Yep. So, um, so I was praying for him on the phone and in the middle of that conversation, the Lord told me to tell him to eat eggs. Okay. Which is completely irregular and strange because he had a feeding oh. tube and he hadn't eaten from his mouth in six months. So at the end of my in prayer, six months, oh my goodness. Yeah, he, he had not eaten from his mouth. And I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And tomorrow morning when you get up, I, want, I need you to eat eggs. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and his wife said, can you repeat the last part you just said? And, and I said, no, you heard me right. I, I told you to eat eggs. And she goes, he, he doesn't eat from his mouth. He has a feeding tube. And I go, I know, but Jesus told me to tell you that. I don't know what it means. Just, just do it. And she goes, okay. So we got off the phone, right? The next morning, at oh my goodness. morning, I get a phone call, and it's him, and he's speaking, and he just got through eating eggs, and he had no tumor at all, no tumor at all, and he said, I just got through eating eggs, and I'm victorious, and I was, I was in a restaurant, and I was running around the restaurant high-fiving people. It was <laughs> awesome. It was just an awesome <laughs> testimony. So I used that, that as is fun. It's, you know, that's just the power of God. I don't know why he told me to, to tell him to eat eggs. He just did. Isn't that crazy? Is it, the Lord, yeah, I tell you, there's just, the Lord is just so creative in what he wants to do. And, but, but, you know, it pushed you to, to, to step out in faith. And I think that's really, I think that's a good point to leave it on. We're about to go ahead into um, breakout sessions right now, but, but the, uh, but the, it, it's, it's, learning how to hear from the Lord. And, and this is going to be a topic that we're going to be hitting a lot on this, on these calls. And, and I actually would love to have probably somebody, a presenter come and actually teach more on hearing from the Lord, but uh, in your heart and how to do that. But really the, the real answer is you've just got to try it. Like when you think you're hearing from the Lord, you're never going to know until you try it. So today, I think as you go, as they go into these breakout sessions, you can be talking about this a little bit more and and just the stepping out and trying it and that's how you're going to know to learn and, and kind of practice hearing from god and saying oh is this god is this me is this just my imagination <laughs> whatever you know yeah. but you got to try it. todd thank you so much for coming on i i could probably we could probably go on for like two hours more yeah. like this and just yeah. have a great time but but we really appreciate you being on okay. and we're going to head into the the breakout session